The next question, of course, is how do we get the USD into our game engine of choice? And my game engine of choice is Unreal, and I'm using 5.1. Even though this is very much a Bifrost workshop, I'm going to show you something very, very quickly in Unreal. So here we are in the Unreal Engine. And all I've got set up here is an empty stage. Now, for this to work, you're going to need to make sure that your plugins, well, your USD plugin, which comes with the engine, it's by Epic Games, you'll need to make sure that this is switched on. If it's not switched on, then you switch it on, you're going to have to quickly restart the engine. I have mine switched on. And what that gives you is this USD stage window which you can find in Window, Virtual Production, USD Stage. So this will only turn up once the plugin is loaded. And then you'll get this window here. Now I've just got mine docked with my content browser. I can move it across there if I want to, or I can undock it if I want to. Same kind of thing. All good. What you get here is your USD controls. And let me show you really, really quickly how this works. What I want to do is open a USD file. So to open a USD file, I need to output a USD file from Bifrost. Go back to where we're working. And this is where these two come in. So on the controls for your USD output compound, which I will supply to you, you have two checkboxes. One is enabled USD. If I turn that off, it's just not going to, this node is not going to do anything. Turn it back on, my USD comes back. The other one you have is save USD and then a somewhere to save the USD output to. So I'm going to turn on save USD. As soon as I do that, it's going to save. See, it's still thinking about that a little bit. So I can browse to somewhere on my drive, and I've just got a USD set up here. Let's call this week two USD output, and I can save it as a USD file, a USD A file, or a USD C file. These are just different formats of the same file. USD is the generic, USDA is ASCII, and USDC is compressed. I think it's a compressed binary or a crate binary, I think it's called. From what I've tested, Unreal will take all of those. The difference being, if you want to manually go and look at what this is writing out, you can make it a USDA and load it in a text editor and check it out. So what I'm going to do for, for just a bit of speed, I'm just going to go generic and go USD. Call it week two USD output. That's not really descriptive. So let's put a forest in there somewhere as well. Cool. Hit save. It has a think and it's now output it. We can check that by going to my USD folder. There it is. Week two USD output forest USD. It's 18 megabytes, which is quite a bit compressed from 50 megabytes. This is the same thing. To get that into the Unreal Editor, you open it. It's going to load the USD stage, and you will get this thing here, USD stage actor. If we focus in on that, you can see it's our forest, but it's very, very small. And it's very, very small because my units and Unreal units don't always talk. So we can fix that in a couple of ways. You can fix it in Unreal by going in here and just say, I don't know, what's good? 200, 200, and 200. Let's just zoom out a little bit and maybe move that up in the Z a smidgen. And you can see that's our forest. That's what we've made in Bifrost. All of our colors have come through. Our positioning has come through. You can see if I just do something like this, that, you know, the clearings that we put around our, our little lakes here have come through. It's literally outputting that into Unreal Engine. And at this point, you could access the meshes. So if I wanted to say work on, wanted to give the terrain some, something like a, uh, a collision, because right now it doesn't have any collision, I could go to the static mesh for the terrain. There it is. The other thing I can do too is I can drag and drop the USD in and I will get all of these meshes split out. The thing that you're going to need to be in, to be looking at here is, and the reason that this works, is that this, if you look at the trees here, you see it's got an instancer subfolder. So this is a USD point instancer. What it's bringing across is the point positions and the trees that we used. And we used three, four of each tree. 
we have 12 trees. And those are the prototypes. So it's kept its structure as an instancer. And, you know, that's about all I'm going to show you in Unreal right now. But one thing that's very, very good about this output method is if I, if I jump back into Bifrost and I leave everything the same, I leave save USD the same and all that kind of thing. And we go all the way back to our fields. Yeah, like all the way back to where we built our terrain. And we need to find out where we're displacing our plane. So this is basic terrain here. Comes down here, that's the lakes. And this is the displace points here. So if I take this fractal noise field and I change its seed to three, you can see that everything changed. Let's go back to our forest scatter shape. Now all of our procedural rules are still in place. The trees are not scattering where it's too steep or too high or too low. And as you can see by the slightly paler and different color scheme, this is still the USD. If I come back to Unreal and reload the USD, it's going to get very small again. No, it didn't. It kept its scale. But you can see that it's changed. It's changed to match what we've done in Bifrost. And so while this is not a bridge between Bifrost and, you, and, and Unreal Engine, it's pretty close to one. All you're going to need to do once you make any changes over in Maya is come here and go reload. This is the output I prefer for a game engine. There are a couple of issues with it, which I won't go into here because they're not really relevant for what we're trying to do. This is a demonstration of getting things into the Unreal Engine. And to give you an idea of this, I can hit play. I'm in the terrain. Now the scale's not all that good and there is no collision, but if you ever wanted to feel giant running through a forest, there you go. And that was very quick and very easy for what's got to be said is quite a complex scene. As I've said before, feel free to go into these compounds, dive in, take a look what I'm doing, especially take a look at the USD output and see if you can work out how it works. As I said, there are two weeks in this course on just on USD and they're coming later. Okay? You can use this node to output things to your game engines. You can dive in and investigate that node. That's the beautiful thing with Bryfrost is that anything I've built here, so any, any sort of like my waiting compound, you can jump in and see how I've made the waiting compound and work it out, trace things back. We'll get getting into more into that next week. All right, so what we've got now is we've got our scatter done. We've got our forest done. We've had a look at how we can get things from one Bifrost graph into another one, which is here. And we've built a little output, which allows us to go for USD or Bifrost. I'm going to switch it back to Bifrost. Let's not have that selected. Oh, that's, that's possibly something as well. You will have seen a new thing turn up in your outliner. That's your USD output. So if we show our USD just by switching off this, and you can see the colors have changed again. Select the Bifrost in the outliner, it doesn't select anything. But if you select this USD proxy 2, this is where your USD is outputting to inside of Maya. So this is Maya USD. And you can see, if you show shapes here, you can see all of your stuff just the same as you would in the Unreal Engine, like terrain trees. Inside the trees, you've got the instancer. Inside the instancer, you've got the prototypes. And, and that's how it's working. So yeah, that is forest scattering and output to a game engine. I hope this has been enlightening and has helped. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at strands. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. Have a good day. See ya.